going to the relevance of the topic for this. So if we have any political difference between Muslims in the West, it would fall into these realms, given that as the background, which I hope is not irrelevant. And that is that um, the Muslims are fragmented into 50 little tiny states. There is not any plausible movement to unify those states politically at all. In fact, you will go and look in all kinds of sources and you will go to the countries themselves and visit them and look in vain for any efforts to politically unify the Muslim world apart from some uh, completely fantasizing fringe group like the Islamic Liberation Party in, in England. Uh, you will find no support in the ground for that. Why? Because in a system where America and or the West is dominant, one Muslim country will not put itself under the rule of another. And the attempt that was done to do that, the United Arab Republic between Egypt and Syria from 1958 to 1961, led to the Syrians' resentment against larger Egypt ruling it. The Syri Syria revolted and it failed. And that failure was so big that it wasn't even tried again apart after that. And you saw that Saddam Hussein's uh, bullheaded and bludgeoning attempt to incorporate Kuwait into Iraq, and Kuwait being one's mere city, albeit a very important one with all its oil, that, that simply didn't succeed at all. And so um, given that kind of extreme political fragmentation, there is certainly no Muslim country that is a convincing enemy or opponent to the West. I mean, Nazi Germany and Japan fought in World War II, you know, in the war that the Americans considered the good war. My father fought in it because at that time it couldn't be seen for sure quite what the outcome might be. And after all, look at how much territory Germany and Japan ran, overran. It, it looked like a very credible, serious threat, even though it was turned back and defeated. And it might have turned out differently, too, had Hitler made nuclear weapons first. I mean, the consequences would have been horrible. But uh, to imagine that now a Muslim country could do anything whatsoever against the United States, that is far removed from the realm of reality. And furthermore, it is a fact which the Muslim populations are thoroughly, completely aware of. And so that leads to um, so-called political terrorism, which comes out of a, a limited fringe groups, which are very limited geographically. Is it fair to pillory the whole Muslim population, say? Is it fair to pillory the people of Bangladesh, not one of whom has ever been engaged in a terrorist act and who constitute 10% of the Muslim population in the world by denouncing all of Islam for terrorist actions? Is it to be assumed that the 10% of the Muslims who are in Bangladesh or the 16% who are in Indonesia welcome uh, actions by Muslims that are connected with other geographically specific things, especially the Palestinian-Israeli struggle, which has produced the lion's share of such things. But apart from that, there was also the Israeli-Lebanese struggle. There is too with Iran and Afghanistan, which has gone through a horrible 23-year uh, civil war that is not resolved even to this day. Did anything, though, emerge out of most of the other Muslim countries? And did those movements or those acts by freelance individuals actually involve the populations of those places? Certainly not. Now, of course, there has been some allegations that there was certain state support for some things. And those might be plausible, particularly in the case of, Ira of revolutionary Iran. In the case of other ones, I'm not very convinced. And you would have to put the burden of, of uh, proof uh, that, would, that would be on you to show, in other cases, that the state supported something else outside of those areas. But um, 
it, it, it is generally about that. And then, of course, the Muslim states themselves are aligned, more or less, completely with the United States. And those that are not aligned, because the United States has taken umbrage at some of their past behavior, such as Libya, Syria, uh, Iran, Iraq, Yemen, and the Sudan, mostly would like to be aligned or would prefer to be aligned with the United States. Hence the attempts of Iran to have some rapprochement with the United States, albeit not just on any terms. There are negotiations that are going on there. Similarly with Libya, there are negotiations going on now. Similarly with Syria, there are negotiations going on. Because on the whole, all of these states would prefer to be integrated into the world system and not stand apart from it. And the governments of the states generally prefer that too. Of course, there is the problem that the governments of these states lack legitimacy. And that is a very serious problem, indeed, the political one, which uh, I won't delve into further unless you ask me some leading questions about it. But it uh, is a, a, a difficult uh, problem because Islam does not easily confer legitimacy on a state. A state can only achieve a kind of ad hoc legitimacy. It cannot have any ultimate legitimacy. So ultimate legitimacy comes from God and went from God to the prophet, from the prophet to the righteous caliphs, but after that it was cut off. So there was not any further political legitimacy. And even if someone claimed, well, the caliphate continued flourishing for some centuries thereafter, well, not now. No caliphate, it's gone. So there isn't that. And the possibility of restoring it probably doesn't exist because any attempt at restoration would not gain the assent of either most of the Muslims or even a large minority of the Muslims, in fact, any more than a tiny fringe group 